Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. Today, we're discovering the most horrible sound in the world. Uh, why can't we discover the most wonderful sound in the world instead? That sounds much more pleasant. I mean, yes, it does sound like a terrible idea, but stay with me. We'll learn how one scientist convinced hundreds of thousands of people to rank the world's worst sounds, and the result is actually a lot of fun. We're going to start this episode with a quick warning. The sound effects we have in store are lots of fun, but they may not be for everyone. If you're super sensitive to sound, you might want to skip this one. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Marshall, what do you think is the most horrible sound in the world? Definitely the sound of like when you have a mechanical pencil and you haven't pushed out the lead, but you forgot and then you start writing with no lead pushed out. <laughs> so it's kind of like a screeching across the paper. Yeah, even just describing it, it's giving me shudders right now. <laughs> For me, the worst sound is mouth noises. What? You hate <laughs> no. mouth No, just please stop. Noises? Please stop. <laughs> I know that not everyone is as bothered by mouth sounds as I am. Everyone has their own worst sound. So we asked our listeners to tell us what they think is the worst sound in the world. My name is Ava, and I think the worst sound in the world is Dad blowing his nose. My name is Ivy, and my least favorite sound is nails getting scraped against a chalkboard. Hi, my name is Vivian, and the worst sound in the world is the sound my dog makes when someone accidentally steps on her tail. Hi, my name is Kai, and the worst sound in the world is glass shattering. Those are all horrible sounds that are kind of painful to think about. But how do you decide what the absolute worst sounds in the world are? Before we find out, let's ask our listeners. What do you think the worst sound in the world is? And how do you think a scientist would find out? Just take a minute and think about it. Trevor Cox is an acoustic engineer who studies all the sounds, the good, the bad, and the absolute worst. Wherever there is sound in the world, there's things to be studied. Many years ago, Trevor had a funny idea for a project. So the project started as this idea of trying to find out what the worst sound in the world was. Um, okay, but why would you want to do that? That sounds like a lot of really painful listening. Let's go back in time a bit. It was the early days of the internet. Just as people were clicking send on their first ever emails, Scientists were figuring out ways to do science online. We were just starting to see a lot of online experiments into psychology. Researchers were playing around with online surveys, asking kind of silly questions just to get the hang of it. So what, like anyone, could do on social media just every day now? Right. But this was the first time scientists could ask questions of thousands of people around the world. Rather than people coming into laboratories and being experimented on, we get people at home to join in. Psychologists who study how people think, feel, and behave ask questions like, what's the funniest joke? But Trevor was interested in how people react to sound. And it took a while before computers could actually play sound. Now we all carry mobiles and tablets, which all have this capability. But it used to not be true. You had to order a a special sound card. I remember having a computer without a sound card. Like, it could only go beep, boop, boop, boop. It took a sound card if you wanted to, like, actually hear real recorded sounds. You're, like, living history. Indeed. (laughs) So when computers started coming with the ability to play sound, Trevor saw his moment to make a splash in the new world of internet science. And so it seemed a great opportunity to pioneer the first ever mass sound experiment online. Okay, but he could have done a study on anything. So why did he pick horrible sounds? Well, Trevor's work includes studying how sounds make people feel. And it just occurred to me that 
horrible sounds are something which give a really strong response. I thought it'd just be fun to find out how people respond to it and why and find out which was the worst one. I guess he has an interesting idea of what fun is. So how did he make the survey? The first step was to decide which horrible sounds to include. So we knew that scraping sounds was this mystique, you know, fingernails down the blackboard, all those sorts of sounds. So we had a few of those. And then we knew there was something called a disgust reaction where people get sort of recoil at sort of bodily sounds, you know, the sounds of people chomping and things like that. So we thought, oh, we'll have a set of those. It's like a recipe, a little sprinkle of fingernails on the blackboard here, add a dog barking there. Mix them all together, and you have an absolute nightmare of (laughs) of an acoustic study. (laughs) Drover included 34 different sound clips in the study that may be considered horrible to most ears. Some were sound effects that he found, and others he recorded himself. The sound of someone chomping an apple was me chomping an apple with my mouth open. But we just made sure we got recorded lots of versions and then picked out what was the worst one. But some sounds weren't so easy to record, like the sound of someone throwing up. Oh, God. (laughs) Do you have to find someone throwing up? Like, he's just waiting around corners from a gross restaurant being like, now's my chance. (laughs) Did you see how much they ate on the buffet? (laughs) (laughs) Not exactly. The vomiting sound had a little magic behind it sound of someone being sick was composed of essentially two sounds, which was the bodily sounds of the, uh, you know, what actually people do with their vocal system, and then actually baked beans being thrown into the bucket. Baked beans! Oh. <laughs> I will never look at a can of baked beans the same way again. It's actually a pretty artistic process to get that sound just right. So it's got to sound believable, like a, uh, and it goes clunk. There's the beans, so I hit the bucket. So there's a bit of you know work to make it actually work. And also getting the right actor to make the right vocal sounds is really important as well. So I'm just imagining actors mulling around like, hmm, this casting call is a bit weird. They just want to hear me upchucking, but what's my motivation? <laughs> Trevor eventually found the right vomit actor and got the sound. When it was ready, he put it on a special website with all the other sounds for people to listen to and rate. You know, whether that's the sound of fingernails down the blackboard or the dentist drill or someone sort of sniffling or chomping with their mouth open, all these horrible sounds. Ugh, so hard to choose the best worst sound. It was really simple. You hit a play button, it played a horrible sound, and then you rated it. So how would they rate it? In complaints to the website designer? They would rate them by clicking on a row of smiley faces that showed the expression they felt after hearing the sound. Like the ones you see in a doctor's office to tell how much pain you're in? Exactly. But it was just kind of as simple as that, really. Listen to a sound, tell me how unpleasant it is. I mean, I don't know who would sign up for that. Yeah, I would not be the first to volunteer, but like Trevor said, he got hundreds of thousands of responses from all around the world. So what did he find? What are the most horrible sounds in the world? Uh, This is the part I've been waiting for. Are you ready? Uh, As ready as I'll ever be, I suppose. Some of the best, worst sounds were a whoopee cushion, a squeaky seesaw, and a baby crying. Those are some of the best, worst sounds, but what is the worst, most horrible, most awful sound? Number one, drum roll, please. The worst sound in the world was the sound of someone being sick. Oh, God. (laughs) That's terrible. It's vomit. (laughs) (laughs) Even though I know it's actually a can of baked beans hitting a bowl, it still sounds awful. Right? It's super gross. Do you think because the sound was made to sound, like, so bad, that's why it was at the top of the worst list? Is that, like, artificially engineering it to be bad? I wondered that, too. And here's what Trevor said. The reason that vomiting comes out top, not only because it was a horrible recording, it's because there's a universal response to vomiting. So what does that mean, a a universal response to vomiting? So, like, everyone hates throwing up? (laughs) 
So hearing the vomit sound causes people to have a disgusted reaction because most people have been sick at some point in their life. It's definitely not pleasant, so that makes sense. Um, But why do people hate the sound of nails scraping down a chalkboard so much? Chalkboards are hardly even in classrooms anymore. They're barely a threat. It's interesting. Trevor says our cringy reaction to this sound is our survival instinct kicking in because it sounds a lot like screaming. First of all, it's ah, it's high pitched. And so what you're actually listening to is something that has characteristics of a distress call. Ah, I'm a fingernail being scraped across this chalkboard and it hurts. <laughs> so anyway, did Trevor find out why some people hate certain sounds and others are fine with them? Like, I, I can't imagine hating a whoopee cushion sound. It's just, it's just the best. <laughs> it's a combination of what the sound is and how we perceive the sound. A person may hear a whoopee cushion and think, gross, stinky farts. The sound isn't funny to them. It's genuinely horrible. So you're saying one person's whoopee cushion is another person's nail on the chalkboard. So people feel differently about different sounds. Right. And that's why the survey was such a good early test or example of doing a big survey over the Internet. Everyone has strong feelings about the sounds they hate. That's clever, but is there any deeper reason to know the most horrible sound in the world? I mean, besides being able to torture your little brother? That's a really good question. It's actually a way to make the world sound better. So that could be trying to make a washing machine which doesn't make too much noise so it's less annoying. Or it could be creating uh, better TV sound so people with a hearing loss can actually hear the dialogue better. That's really interesting. I feel like sound doesn't get enough credit for making things either good or awful. (laughs) Totally. Trevor's work with sound and surveys adds on to other discoveries and designs. What you do is you put a little building block in place that then people build on. And that's actually how most science works. Trevor helped build a way to study how people feel about sounds over the internet. And now it's done all the time. But it's especially handy when people can't actually leave their houses. Exactly. So next time you hear a horrible sound, know that it's not all bad. It helps contribute to science. Trevor's online survey was among the first of its kind, but now it's easy for anyone to set up an online survey or poll. Try it to find out what the best sounds are. Make a list of what you think are some of the most wonderful sounds on the planet. Then, with the help of a grown-up, make a survey and send it to your family and friends, or even do it with your classmates. The answers might surprise you. We'd love to see your results. Send them to us at tumblepodcast at gmail.com. Thanks today to Dr. Trevor Cox, professor of acoustic engineering at the University of Salford in Manchester, England. Also thanks to Ava, Ivy, Vivian, and Kai for sending in your awesome recording. You can listen to all the horrible sounds Trevor used in his study, if you want to, by visiting our website at sciencepodcastforkids.com. We'll also have recommendations of sites for you to make your own online surveys. To learn more about some of the worst sounds in the universe, listen to our bonus interview episode with Trevor. It's available to patrons who pledge just $1 a month or more on patreon.com slash tumblepodcast. Sarah Lentz made the artwork and is our head of partnerships. Casey Georgie wrote and produced this show. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I edited this show. I'm Marshall Escamilla, and I make all the music. Thanks for listening, and join us next time for more stories of science discovery.